Hey, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Jeremy. I'm one of the co-founders of Nickel. And I'm gonna walk you through basically how to use Nickel with a real life example, and you'll see hopefully how it works. Let's click get started. If you don't have an account yet, you can you can sign up with a username or password. Either way, you can log in with a Google account. We use Auth0 for authentication, so it should be very safe and secure. And so with Nickel, you can basically create real functions that do work based on data rather than traditional programming methods. And so it's, you know, this is essentially what machine learning is. So I'm gonna click new function. And so for this example, I'm gonna do kind of a uh, comment moderation function. And so I actually use Instagram a lot and there's tons of spam comments on Instagram all the time. And so I'm gonna show you how, if you work for Instagram, you could basically clean up those spam comments in about 10 minutes here. So you have to choose the type of input. So a comment is text. And right now we allow two types of inputs, text and image. And so I'm gonna choose text and click next. And then for the label names, um, you choose how you wanna classify this text. So right now we do image or text classification only. We'll expand this later, but those are kind of our first two modalities. And so for now I'm gonna type uh, not spam and spam, just to basically have a way to feed these you know, free form text strings into this function and then figure out whether or not they're spam. Um, when you're choosing your labels, you could get more complicated. You could do not spam, spam, uh, you know, hate, hate speech, uh, you know, bigotry or anger or whatever, but you know, think about what you really need and you probably, you probably want to choose the fewest labels you can to get what you need out of the function because the more labels you need, the more data you're going to need and the more like room for error there might be. So for now, let's just start with two, click next. So now we need to import data. And so what this is, is we're basically importing a bunch of data to use to train the function. And you need to have at least 30 samples. And so I have a CSV here. That's basically uh, just, it has 200 different Instagram comments that I've downloaded. And so you can see it's a, it's like a spreadsheet here and it's got the username, the date of the comment, how many likes are received. Here's the actual comment and the, and the link to the actual Instagram post. And so I'm gonna choose this column. And so I just clicked it here. And I'm also gonna choose don't import the first row. If my, if I also had a, a column in the sheet that was the actual label I wanted that said either not spam or spam, then I could choose this right here. And notice what it says here, the output column must contain the label name or the label index from the defined step. What that means is I, I chose my labels as not spam and spam. So I could have a column here where it said not spam or spam, or I could put zero or one, which is the index, zero meaning not spam, one being spam, of those labels we chose. But since I don't actually, I haven't labeled these yet, we can do that right in nickel. So I'm gonna uncheck that. And so you can see this is highlighted. So then I'm gonna click import. And so it basically imported that data and you can see it imported 198 different comments. The reason it's not 200, if you see some of your samples go away is it basically automatically removes duplicates. So if you have any duplicates in there, which I might've had, then um, it will remove those. So it looks like it removed two duplicates. And so then I go and label these. And so this first one is actually, and it generally, you know, Nickel will basically choose which ones to show you next. Usually it starts as random, and then it might try to show you the best ones to basically optimally train your function. In this case, this very first one actually is a spam. And so I've seen this a lot, so I can quickly read it. But it says, all I did was follow expert underscore trader underscore Michelle underscore FX instruction as usual. And this week I made $15,000, blah, blah, blah. That's spam. If it's just tagging a username, that's rarely spam. So I'm gonna click not spam. And now I'm just gonna label a bunch of these and I'll fast forward the video so you need to watch. One other thing is sometimes you might make a mistake. So let's say I was looking at this comment down here and it says, I start with doubts, but having, uh, but I'm having 100% sure that's $10,000 after investment. Well, this is spam. I can't even read it. Um, this is spam. But let's say I clicked not spam. It goes away and that's, you know, it's annoying, but you can go fix that later. So don't worry about it. Just keep going. And notice it's a, there's a countdown right here. It says that you need basically 13 total labeled samples in order to build our first model from the data. Basically, Nickel needs some examples that you give it in order for it to predict future examples. So I'm going to keep training 18 more. Okay, so I actually got my 30. Um, so you can see I've labeled 30, but notice that still it says here, we still need one case where the desired output is spam and try searching for some. So what that means is I found 27 
not spam, to spam. And you can see if I hover over this little red button here, it says, need one more spam to begin training. It needs at least three examples of each label in order to make the first model. So if you've created like a ton of labels, for example, you gotta find, make sure you find three of every single one. That's one reason that that's usually best to start with fewer labels if your model can do so. And so now I'm basically gonna go look for some spam comments um, to make sure I can get one. Okay, so here's one I found. This is, a, this is a spam comment. It's got the typical format there. So I click spam. And then you can see right here, it says we're training your first model. Notice the little spinner here. Whenever this spinner is going, that means it's retraining your model. It's basically re-crunching the data to predict. And you can see these green bars right here. When you see those, then you have basically a trained model. And what these are showing you is how accurate your model is based on the data you've already done. And so what this is doing is called cross validation. And so right now I've given it uh, 30 trained samples and it basically takes those samples and takes out a chunk and trains a model on the other, you know, I think we do 10 different uh, cross validations. So it takes out 10%, then trains a different model on the 90%, and then quizzes itself on the remaining 10% against the labels I already provided it. And so it does that 10 different times. And so basically it's this like big cross validation. And doing that, you can see it's 96.7% accurate. And you can see now it's predicting these here are predictions of the rest of the data. So you can see 30 of the 198 samples I have have already been labeled, and now it's making a guess. So here, indeed, I would consider that not spam, and it guessed not spam with 94% accuracy. This yellow color means that we haven't yet labeled it, and you'll see the other colors uh, in a bit. So I'm, gonna, I'm basically gonna do some more training. So when I train some more data here, it's gonna use that to basically make the model better. You can see it's training again. Whenever you're giving it more, more, tr uh, more labeled data, the model gets better. So here are a couple it actually predicted wrong. And so you can see that this is indeed spam and this is indeed spam. And so I'm gonna click spam on both of these. And as I click those, you can see the accuracy actually goes down, but then it's gonna retrain the model. And once it retrains the model, the accuracy actually goes back up since it knows more about it. Here's another one that's spam. And remember also when we clicked one wrong, we, like mis we purposely clicked an incorrect one or I purposely clicked an in incorrect one to show you what the mistake was. Um, we can go and fix that in a second. Um, but first, let's go click Invoke. So if I go to Invoke here and say, hey, Jeremy, I love your Instagram. Keep it up. This doesn't appear to me to be a spam comment, so I click Invoke. Um, and sure enough, not spam with 63% confidence. The more data you give it, the more confident it will become. So with only 49 trained, it's still not super confident. But if I uh, type in a very spam-looking comment, uh, we'll see what it does. So this is this to me would be a spam comment. So I click invoke, and then sure enough, it's predicts spam with 91%. So we already have a pretty good working function here that's worked in our two test cases. Um, but now I'm gonna go click browse and see if we actually improve this accuracy a little bit. So I click browse, and now you can see these green, this green color means um, the human, which is this little icon here, the hu human me has labeled this as not spam. The uh, computer, nickel, that's the computer icon, has predicted that it is not spam. So that's why it's green. That means the, the computer's prediction was correct. And then it shows the accuracy or the confidence of 95%. Um, one cool thing about the confidence is you can, you can kind of use this in your own application to decide how confident you need to be in the machine's prediction before you act on it. So for example, if, if, if Nickel is only 52% confident that spam, you know, that might not be good enough for you to remove or hide the comment, or if it's 99% confident, maybe that is good enough. So we can, we can filter these. So let's see which ones it's getting wrong. So if I, this desired output is what the human has labeled. That's what I think it should be. So I say, for, I wanna look at the ones that, the desired output is spam, and then you can see this one's red, and I can choose the function output is not spam. So this is all of the labels that's currently getting wrong, or this is all the examples that's currently getting wrong. And so you can see this is indeed a spam comment, and I correctly labeled it spam, but it is uh, predicting it's not spam, but with only 51% uh, confidence. So that's kind of why I mentioned if it's a very low confidence, maybe you don't want to act on it. And we can improve this prediction by continuing to train more data. Let's look for the other incorrectly labeled ones in you know this red section there. We can find those by looking for the ones that the human called not spam, and the computer predicted a spam. And so the computer predicted this is spam. This actually one, um, these two are incorrect. 
So see, these are both spam comments and uh, I labeled them as not spam. I incorrectly labeled them as not spam. And that might also be why it's predicting some spam ones incorrectly. So I'm gonna fix that. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is indeed spam, this is indeed spam. So I'm gonna click spam there, spam there. And then you can see uh, it's gonna retrain now that I have clicked not spam. And this is in real time, so you can see how fast it is. And so now look, that bumped our accuracy up to 98%. So now you can see there's very few. So if we look for the ones that are spam and the computer has labeled not spam, there are none. And if we look for the ones that are not spam and nickel has labeled as spam, this is the only one. It's just a single comment where it's just this long username and you can see only 54% confidence. So we can actually go fix that by training more data. And then the final step is to go to API. So API is basically where you can integrate this into your actual application. And so the the real invoke happens here. So this is if you wanna, for example, inside your application, you want a, a new person comments on a post or something, you can then take that post, send it to nickel, or take that comment, send it to nickel, then nickel will predict whether or not it's spam based on the model that you trained. This is using this curl request here. You can put that into a command line, or there's some Python examples here. And note that we do use um, access tokens. And so there's actually a two-step process to um, actually invoke, it, invoke this. The first is to call and get an access token using your client ID and your client secret, which is here. And note that these are all customized um, document documents or documentation for you. You know, this is your client ID and this is your client secret. So you call to get an access token and then you use your access token um, to actually call the invoke. This is the, like kind of the best case or the best practice security. One other cool thing you can do is if you go back to define, um, you can actually make this a public function. So for example, if you wanted to uh, include this in your JavaScript code and you didn't care if anybody else was calling it or that was the point was to have other people call it, you could click this as public. I click save here. And then when I go back to the API, notice there's no more access token. You can just invoke it without any access token, whatever. It might also be good just for testing if you want to get it up quick and uh, dirty and then add the security layer after. And you can also name your function there. Like I'll call this Instagram comment spam. Well, there you have it. You've got a, a working function. Great function, Jeremy. Let's see if it thinks it's spam. Not spam with 76% accuracy. I agree, not spam. So there you go. You've got a working function with nickel. I hope that helped you get your first nickel function up and running.